Katarzyna was a 23-year-old woman who lived and studied in Krakow, Poland. She was known to be rather shy, quiet, and reserved. Those who knew and studied with Katarzyna did not know a great deal about her. Katarzyna was struggling to find her path in life. She first studied psychology at university, but quit after one semester. She did the same with history, but then settled with religious studies. She attended classes at the start, but before too long her attendance dropped. Sadly, Katarzyna was struggling with depression, which is most likely why she struggled with her education. Her depression stemmed from an extremely traumatic incident. In 1996, she took her father on a hike, but during this hike, her father fell and suffered a spinal injury, which led to a number of complications, and as a result, he sadly passed away. Katarzyna was not only stricken with grief, but also guilt. She blamed herself for her father's death, and following his passing, she changed as a person. Katarzyna's mother noticed the change in her behaviour, and saw that it wasn't improving with time. This generated a great deal of concern, so her mother organised some therapy, to which Katarzyna was keen to take part in, and attended every session. That was until the 12th of November 1989, when she failed to attend her session at 6pm. Katarzyna's mother began to panic, and so she contacted some of her friends and those that knew her to see if they had seen her recently. But they had not. Katarzyna's mother then went to a local police station to report her missing. She explained that her daughter had failed to show up for her therapy session for depression. The police assumed that Katarzyna had either ended her life or just run away. And so, they believed there was no point in searching just yet, as if she was still alive, she would probably return home soon. Days passed by and Katarzyna was nowhere to be seen, and so, the police decided to act. A search was underway, but their efforts to locate her were unsuccessful. There was no CCTV footage of Katarzyna in her usual spots where she was known to go. It seemed that she had pretty much just vanished without a trace. And then, a haunting discovery was made. A discovery so disturbing that it shocked the police to their core. On the early morning of the 6th of January 1999, a tugboat captain was out in the Vistula River. As he was making his way down the river with his crew, the propellers stopped. Something had gotten jammed in the blades. The captain assumed that some branches or garbage was responsible, and so he ordered his crew to solve the issue. But this was not a branch or garbage. It was a strange white leathery material. The crew were then hit with the strong smell of decomposing flesh. The material was human skin. There was no actual body, it was just the skin from a torso that seemed to have been sliced off with surgical precision, and had been stitched up to create what appeared to be a suit made from human skin. Those on board immediately contacted the police and told them of their discovery, and the river was swiftly searched. After a couple of days searching the river, the police were able to recover a right leg and some other human body parts, along with some clothing. DNA testing was used to determine who was the victim. These tests concluded that the skin was that of Katarzyna. Her complete body would never be found. Katarzyna's mother was told the devastating news that her daughter had been murdered. Whoever had done this to Katarzyna appeared to be an experienced killer. The way her body had been skinned and sewed back together strongly indicated this. There was also a hole in this suit on one side. This hole had been deliberately put there. The person who had created this suit had intentions of wearing the skin. Due to the twisted niche of the case, the Polish police ended up asking the FBI for some help. Investigators began to look into Katarzyna's life and her final moments before vanishing. A number of things made them believe that Katarzyna had met someone around a month before she went missing, and was perhaps in a secret relationship with them. Before going missing, she had become more conscious of her appearance and had made efforts to shift some weight. She had also dyed her hair from black to blonde. To the investigators, these signs showed that she had potentially made efforts to impress someone, and perhaps this someone was her killer. Investigators also discovered that her attendance at university had slipped in the month before her murder, furthering the theory that she could have met someone. 
Those working on the case believe that whoever was responsible was a similar size to Kachajina and was most likely a butcher or a surgeon or a keen hunter and highly intelligent. They also believed that the killer could be imitating Buffalo Bill from the classic horror film Silence of the Lambs. On the 31st of May 1999, the police in Krakow received a phone call. An elderly man was on the line and this man lived with his son and grandson. He called the police to tell them that he believed that his grandson had killed someone. The police were dispatched and arrived on the scene. They entered the house and made a truly grim discovery. In the basement of this house, they found a corpse hanging upside down from the ceiling. The victim was the caller's son, a 50-year-old man named Vitaly. Vitaly's head and face had been skinned and sewn onto a mask, and the killer was Vitaly's son, Vladimir. If that wasn't disturbing enough, it turned out that Vladimir's grandfather had very poor vision. Vladimir had actually worn his father's face as a mask and put on his clothes and pretended to be his father in front of his grandfather. The police believed they had found the person they were looking for, but Vladimir claimed that he had no idea who Katarzyna was. And as they dug a little deeper, there was no evidence that he was in any way responsible for the crime. He admitted to killing his father, but not Katarzyna. Vladimir is currently serving a 25-year sentence in a Russian jail as he had immigrated to Poland from Russia. His time will soon be up. Katarzyna and Vladimir both went to the same university and both studied psychology, although at different times. Despite this, it's believed that they did not know each other and the police were satisfied that he had no part in the murder of Katarzyna and so they had to go back to the drawing board. From there, the case went cold for a number of years. Now, let's fast forward to 2012, 13 years after the murder. DNA and forensic testing had greatly improved, and the case was reopened. A 3D scan was done on Katarzyna's remains, and from this, the investigators were able to gain some insights into what happened to her, and the results were extremely disturbing. They discovered that Katarzyna was chained up, beaten, and tortured before her death. It seemed very likely that she was even skinned alive. The scan on her leg that was found showed markings that indicated she had been chained up, and lacerations on her skin showed that she had been slashed numerous times when she was alive. The scan also showed that the killer had used heavy objects to shatter her pelvis. Investigators also enlisted help from a forensics professor. He stated that from the beatings that Katarzyna had sustained, it was likely that the killer had been trained in martial arts and had used various techniques to inflict pain on her. Plant matter was also found on some of Katarzyna's clothing that was recovered from the river. This plant matter was rare and was only found in certain areas of Krakow. This information helped to profile the killer further. And then, in 2017, the police received a letter from a person. This person told the police they were friends with someone who was suspiciously obsessed with the murder of Katarzyna. They even told the police that they knew he had gone to Katarzyna's grave multiple times, and he didn't live too far from the river where she was found. They also stated that he enjoyed harming and killing animals, and that they believed him to be her potential killer. The man's name was Robert Janczewski. Those that knew Robert described him as an extremely strange person, even going as far as describing him as a weirdo and a freak. It turned out that Robert had actually been on the investigator's radar for some time. From the year 2000, he had been a person of interest due to him visiting her grave on multiple occasions. But the police didn't have enough evidence to pursue anything further. On the 4th of October 2017, Robert was arrested and questioned. At the time, Robert was 52 years old and he fit the description of what the police were looking for down to a T. He was known to have harmed animals when he was younger and was considered to be highly intelligent. He joined the army in his early years and worked in the military hospital and morgue, where he learned a great deal of information about human anatomy. 
After his army service, he worked at the Krakow Institute of Zoology. His job there involved skinning animals. He was fired from his job for killing all of the Institute's rabbits for no apparent reason. Robert also had a history of harassing women and watching his neighbours through their window. He was known to enjoy dressing up as a woman and trained in martial arts. When Robert was brought in for questioning, he not only denied killing Katagina, but also claimed to have no idea who she was. It was obvious that he was lying. Friends of Robert knew he frequented the grave, and the police had also seen him attend the grave on multiple occasions. I've seen numerous sources stating that upon the police searching Robert's home, they found traces of blood and hair in his bathroom that belonged to Katagina along with a journal belonging to him detailing her murder. As far as I can tell, this seems to be unconfirmed. There is a great deal of speculation surrounding this case, and there seems to be some misinformation too, which is probably due to the fact that the police are keeping their cards close to their chest. With a total disregard for human life and a love for inflicting harm, it's thought that Robert decided to take his fantasies further, and instead of just wearing women's clothing, he wanted to wear a woman's skin. Investigators have speculated that Robert had scouted out Katagina and engaged in a secret relationship with her in hopes of killing and skinning her to wear her skin. The trial started in 2019, but investigators have requested a closed trial. As far as I can tell, Robert is still in custody, but I could not find any information as to whether or not he has been found guilty or if there are any other victims. I have searched numerous Polish news sources but couldn't seem to find anything. I'm guessing the case could have been delayed due to the recent events in the world. I've seen some sources stating that Katarzyna was taken to a cottage and chained up for a month before being killed. Although, I could not find any credible or reliable sources to confirm this. If you're from Krakow or Poland and know of any additional information, please feel free to share in the comments below. It's been four years since Robert was arrested, but the police are not disclosing the full details of this disturbing case, of which there are 789 pages. Out of the 789 pages, over half of them are classified. The murder of Katagina is considered to be one of the most gruesome in the history of Krakow, and to this day, Katagina's organs, body and head have never been found. <laughs>